So this morning, I caught up with Brian McLaughlin, who is one of our product managers here at Build Online and is kind of a crypto expert. And we just recorded a conversation where I, as kind of a little bit of a crypto uh, skeptic, uh, just asked him questions as somebody that frankly doesn't know that much about the space. Um, crypto is something that we're very interested in. It is something that we are hiring for, and it's something we're gearing up to be able to help companies with. Uh, and so I wanted to just pick his brain a little bit. And so it was a little bit more of a deeper conversation than we normally have on this channel. Um, but if you're interested in crypto, I think you'll really like it. So here we go. Well, hello, I am here today with Brian McLaughlin. He is one of our project managers, a uh, recent hire. He's already been on several of our videos. And one of the things about Brian, um, one of the reasons that we hired him, many reasons that we hired him, but one of the reasons is because Brian has a history in crypto and he is very involved in the crypto hmm. space. And I am a yes. crypto skeptic, I guess you could say. Um, and <laughs> yes. uh, and so I wanted uh, to bring Brian on and uh, and just ask him some questions and uh, see where this goes. So Brian, why don't you tell us a little bit about your history with cryptocurrencies? Oh, man. Yes, that is probably a long story, but I'll try to keep it short for your viewers. Um, basically, I got into it through a church member. Um, I, I was a pastor for about 12 years in a church, and a friend of mine in our church told me about Bitcoin. And I had heard about Bitcoin for a few years, but, you know, I thought this is air. You, you know, it has no a tangibleness to it. Um, what is this all about? And so this was in early 2017 when I heard about Bitcoin. And I just remember watching a few YouTube videos on the whole concept of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And really what it did, and this is where I think this interview will be interesting, Ryan, is that it really gets you what what cryptocurrency really forces you to do is to really look at the philosophical discussion of what money is to begin mm -hmm. with and the difference between money and currency and that there is a difference in those two words. Um, and so really it was from looking at a couple of videos, doing some deep dive on the research of what Bitcoin was that I really started to see that this could be the, the potential of a new emerging asset class in the world economy. And so if there's a way to move money like information moves today, then that definitely has a potential use case. Now, of course, like anything like the dot com bubble back in the 90s, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of um, uh, stuff out there that's going to go to zero. There's no doubt about that. But how do you cut through all the noise and how do you look for the true utility that's going to be here in the next five to 10 years. And so that's the challenge. But anyway, I don't, I don't want to uh, um, brag too much, but I was able to take four figures and turn it into a, a, a modest six figure return in investing in crypto projects over the last four years. Of course, I've lost a lot as well. And I think with anything, what this new emerging asset class does is it challenges you to evaluate your own psychology in investing. It challenges you to look at risk management. That's obviously always a big thing with investing. And, and you're really challenged to look at your time horizon for what you think investing even is. I, obviously within crypto, there's a lot of get rich quick schemes. There's a lot of scams out there that you have to be careful of. I've heard horror stories of people getting robbed of all their crypto. I mean, it truly is the wild, wild west of the 21st century. And so you have to be careful. But um, obviously, through four years of lessons learned, um, I think, I hope, I have a much more a much more mature perspective of the market itself and of this potentially um, uh, new emerging asset class. 
Okay, so I want to push so. back on that just a little bit. One of the things that you Please said do. that I thought was interesting was you said mm -hmm. that, and, and I'm going to get to what is crypto here in a second. I think this question can help us get there. But one of the things that you said was you said that if we could move money like information moves today. And what mm -hmm. my brain did when you said that was like, wait a minute, I don't carry around buckets full of money. You know what I mean? It's Cash. not like... Right. It's like I would guess that 99% of my money I have only ever seen as information. Digits. Is that fair? Yes. So if that that's is the fair. case, what is the difference between uh, U.S. dollars, which you could argue mm -hmm. are a digital currency and Correct. cryptocurrency? And they create the new digits every day <laughs> on a computer <laughs> this is screen, true. right? This is true. I mean, the Federal Reserve is not necessarily printing all these new bills. They're just creating uh, digits on a screen, as I heard one of the chairmen say here not too long ago. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a fair that's a fair push pushback for sure. And so, yeah, and that really leads into what I wanted to talk about, which, which again, I think when you look at its fundamental level what is money itself and with with money what we're basically saying is is it's a transfer of trust it's a transfer mm -hmm. that this piece of paper that i'm giving to you or this transfer of a digit on a screen that i'm giving to you is a trusted measure of value and rate of exchange um where crypto is a little different than what you're currently describing is the way that money moves is what crypto enables is true peer-to-peer -peer permissionless um there's there's no counterparty that's sitting in between you and the other person um the friction of payments um now of course this is a big can of worms because there's different kinds of crypto there's different layers within this conversation we're actually some of the oldest cryptos like Bitcoin and Ethereum are actually full of friction because they're so expensive to move. And what they've ran into over the last several years are the scaling problems. But back to answering your question directly, because I don't want to get off too far, because there is there, there there's a lot of rabbit trails that you could follow with crypto. Yeah. The difference between what what you described and what crypto is trying to solve is that there's no middleman sitting in between you and me, um, which again presents both its advantages, but it can also present some challenges. And the fact that I have to know that I'm sending this money uh, to the real Ryan Hayden and not someone that's impersonating you. Right. And so there's a lot of security questions that, that you then have to ask. And of course with crypto, there's no refunds. There's no um, chargebacks. There's, but the also good thing about crypto is, is if you pick the right crypto, there's very, very almost zero fees involved in transactions. Okay. So, and, and, and that really gets us into a discussion on where is the use case for this technology? I think for 10 years, and I'm shocked that we're not further down the road, just being transparent, um, you know, getting in this market four years ago, I thought we'd be a lot further down the road towards true utility than we are right now. Um, there's still a lot of speculation and there's still a lot of noise, but I don't, I don't know if that answers your, 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 yeah. your question. No, I, th I think fully, it does. But, I think it does. And this is going to be, I think more of a rambling kind of question that I usually post on the YouTube channel, rambling kind of discussion, because it's just, it's not a simple subject. It really is not. It's not. Um, and no. I'm sort of a simple guy. Like I like things to be clear cut and, and simple and sure. Um, this go this goes to what is a currency and inflation what is money um, you know mm -hmm. inflation stinks you make more money and then you lose it all because you know mm -hmm. the government decided to do something we've seen the I, I recently saw a picture I think it was Venezuela where they are sewing the currency into bags and uh, making wallets out of their currency because it is, literally worthless and so it's useless uh so mm -hmm. you can make like a gazillion you know venezuelan dollars and and because of hyperinflation it's nothing it's nothing you know yeah. um and there's always the fear that that sort of thing is going to happen 
you know, based on government action here in, you know, more the developed Western world. And so right. is, is crypto a hedge against that? Is that the main reason why a lot of people get into it? Yeah, that's basically, I mean, when you first get into crypto, that's really the philosophical um, um, entry point that you're coming into this new asset class with is you're looking at the current state of the world economy and you're saying, okay, what is a good hedge against inflation? And so I say this all the time to people, listen, if you're, if, if you're getting into crypto and you're not also in gold and silver, well, then you're really missing the philosophical discussion around it. So I would say that anybody that's exposing themselves to crypto also needs to have some kind of uh, risk exposure to gold and silver, because as 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 you kind of mentioned in the introduction, gold and silver has been around for, you know, 5000 years as a means of a store of value and a measure of transfer and an exchange for goods. So so when anybody asks me about crypto, I first ask them about silver and gold. And of course, you then get into the discussions on the gold and silver bugs and how much do you say, you know, how much do you buy? Um, so, yeah, it would be another hedge against inflation, I think, is how it starts out. But then once you get into it, I think you really start to look at, OK, this technology does have the ability to change, um, for example, in third world countries where you have migrant workers that are coming to the states and they're earning a specific amount of money and they're wanting to send that money back to their families in these third world countries. Up until today, that's been a very uh, friction filled problem with a lot of cost involved. Mm -hmm. And it's sad that even with banking uh, situations today, the clearing houses um, over the last few years here in the States, banks have started to give you the illusion of instant settlements with bank transfers. But it's sad that um, I can send $10,000 to England faster by getting on a plane with the physical cash than actually transferring it. It's, it's going to take up to three days to get there. And then there's a failure rate of up to 6%. I mean, if mm -hmm. we had a failure rate of up to 6% with our HTML email, we would all be saying, what is the problem? Of course, maybe some of us would like email not getting to us. But anyway, um, so so there is that 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 issue in the world today is that you have a lot of just patch quilt technologies from the 70s mm -hmm. that are really in need of an overhaul and i think okay. that people are starting to identify that and so how can crypto technology so so there's blockchain technology itself and then there's the crypto currency um, uh, monetization on top of that technology. And so people are identifying these technologies that, that they hope will have long-term value. And so there's over 15,000 now. 15, <laughs> and so you have to be careful. There are over 15,000 cryptocurrencies now today. Well, that's weird. And there's only like 198 countries in the world. So now every country can yes. have what, you know, <laughs> like 800 cryptocurrencies. Yes. Uh, so and, and, and that's the thing. Most of the cryptos that are out there today, Ryan, I am right there with you. They are, they'll, they'll go to zero. Um, so it's like, how do you pick out the ones? How do you find things that are actually worth investing in? That's the challenge. Okay. Okay. So on this idea of investing, I, I was telling you yeah. beforehand, I, I am like, hopelessly old fashioned when it comes to business and money, right? Like my yeah. idea is with build online, my idea, I've learned far more about our business, listening to successful general contractors than I have listening to people in the software space because hmm. it, it just comes down to things that you would do. Like my grandfather <clears throat> did when he started a successful contracting business in Boston 50 years ago. Treat people right, hmm. treat your employees right, make sure you're doing the job right, you know, that kind of thing. And when it comes right. to investing, I don't have a ton of experience, but my my gut is like, oh, more of like a Warren Buffett, you know, take it slow, mm -hmm. compound interest. And then I see this crypto space. And to me, it looks like you said the wild, wild west. To me, it looks like mm -hmm. 
the 19 or 1849 gold rush. I mean, it looks like you have all these people yeah. that are that's a fair, caution to the that's wind fair and running yes. to these cryptocurrencies in the hope in the NFT space as well, the hope in the hope to get rich quick. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, is it wise to do that? You know, what would you mm -hmm. say to those people? Well, I think that's a great question. And, and I think within your question, if I'm not wrong, um, is the question of how much risk should you expose yourself to in an asset class that's fairly new? Yeah. And so, you know, with that, I think the, the the question would be is looking at your portfolio of investments. And clearly, if you're going into crypto with this idea that you're going to get rich quick, you will lose everything. <laughs> Right. There's just no doubt. And, I mean, I mean, it's just like fair, the people in the 1840s. Yeah. To be fair, that's not just a crypto thing. If you are investing Correct. in the stock market with the hopes of, yeah. you know, getting day trading yeah. and getting rich quick, you're probably you're probably going to end up broke, too. It's, you know, it's, yes, um, it's gambling is what it is for a lot of people. Um, yeah. OK. And cool. so, yes. So, so you definitely look at that as a psychology and say, OK, do I want to expose, expose 1 percent, 2 percent, 5 percent of what I want to do long term? And then the thing is, is you have to find technologies. And and the biggest thing in crypto that I've learned in four years is two things. What use case are they really trying to solve? Most of uh -huh. crypto is a technology in search of a problem to solve. But the other way to look at that is, can a team identify a true problem to solve and then have this crypto technology that meets that? For example, I mean, obviously over the last 50 years, there have been technologies that, can, that have come along that have made our lives more simple, um, well, arguably more simple. Um, and, and and so, yeah, there is new technology that's coming along every day. Of course, the technology that we're enjoying right now with a live video conference is great. Being able to connect and and being able, even, even within our larger business, of being able to work with crazy talented people around the world yeah. in real time is just a, finesse, a, a fascinating thing. So for me, the two things that I've done is I've tried to find, okay, what is that and this is the biggest thing in crypto, is there actually a team of people that are executives, that are, um, you know, professional in what they're doing? Um, is there a team of people that I can find within the crypto space that has this technology that they're trying to solve a real world use case problem with? Like, like the friction of payments between the U.S. and third world countries. You know, it's right. sad when somebody makes makes a uh, makes a hundred dollars here, and by the time they send it to their third world country, it's only sixty because of fees. Hmm. Um, that that needs to be solved, and that's something that will help the entire world um, be better. But yeah, there are very few projects out there that are going to really deliver on that in the long term. You're going to have your pump and dump scheme. You're, you're going to have your your doge millionaires you know elon musk and him tweeting about this random crypto that has zero use case and i think what it does is it really shows you the irresponsibility of a lot of even major players out there i'm amazed that exchanges like coinbase would even list something like doge and it's all because when you exchange these currencies there's fees that are made and if someone like Elon Musk tweets on Doge, it's sad that you still see a lack of immaturity in the market. And so we need better leaders in the market. Again, it's an area that really needs legislation. And that is one area that we have been that, that people who are serious about the technology and see the potential of it. That's where our federal government must step in and give some kind of direction here, because if we don't get that, we're going to continue to have noise. <laughs> awesome. Well, real quick, let's kind of change mm -hmm. from, you know, I think we've talked about like, general crypto stuff enough. How, sure. if, how do you imagine businesses using cryptocurrency? Like, so we help businesses yeah. make software and we're go, our goal is yes. whatever the business is dreaming of that we are already ready to, to chase that. So we are investing 
uh, our resources, not necessarily in cryptocurrency, but we are investing our resources in leveling up so that we can help businesses with cryptocurrency. And we've hired some talented developers out of, uh, out of like, um, different, um, payment processing companies just to work on Mm -hmm. crypto. We hired you in part because of your knowledge and of crypto. So (laughs) how would, (laughs) not just because of that, but in part because of that. Um, So how would a business, how how would you imagine businesses taking advantage? What can they do today? And what can you see them doing two, three years from now? Sure. Well, immediately, one thing that businesses would benefit in adopting the crypto technology today is that they would potentially save three to five percent on their transaction fees if they give people the option to pay. So certainly with payments, that is an area that many businesses are keying in on. Um, Now, of course, with that, looking at some of the most popular cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, you're going to have expensive um, confirmation fees and long wait times. So for for businesses, you would look at faster technologies that are more um, that, that are more environmentally friendly and also cost friendly like xrp would be one um stellar would be another one uh nano would would be another one so there's different ones and then so so yes businesses are going to definitely be interested in this in the payments realm um of course visa doesn't like that um uh, there are other payment processors that aren't going to be fans of that because it does again cut out that middleman need for this extra layer of complexity and cost. So businesses are definitely going to start to see, I believe, the value in payments. Um, I think the other area where businesses are going to start to discover value in this technology is in customer loyalty. Now, there are several companies that already have customer loyalty programs, but one of the uniquenesses of customer loyalty built on blockchain is the ability to then transfer that loyalty, grow that loyalty with time, grow the value of that loyalty. So there's different ways that with crypto, businesses can utilize digital keys, which are basically what what I see as being NFTs. You know, NFTs right now, again, there's a lot of noise and hype. Oh, there's this little JPEG picture on a screen that I can right click and save. And yet someone just spent $5 million on it. Um, you know, what's the what's the value of that? Well, I guess it's the same value between someone who would look at a knockoff pair of Oakley glasses and say, oh, I'm cool wearing the knockoff pair of Oakley glasses. But then there's a certain market segment that says, no, I want the genuine set of Oakley glasses. And so within NFTs, what you're valuing in those NFTs is the value of ownership and rights to that JPEG. So, I mean, I can right click that JPEG and save it, but yet there's a certain market out there that wants to be able to show digital proof of ownership to that JPEG. And so, so there's this new, again, within crypto, several layers deep, there's now this NFT thing, but the NFT technology is fascinating for businesses because NFTs can really be digital keys to your business. So you could hand out a thousand unique, one of a kind NFTs on on a Black Friday event, and then you could continue to give value to those customers long term with that digital key for, let's say, next year's Black Friday event. So there's ways to create um, all kinds of value within this technology, you know, and 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 I hope that I cast that picture clearly enough. But again, it's looking at the base level, what this technology does, not all the noise with the JPEGs that are selling for $5 million, but but what does this technology do? And really it's a digital key for access to your business and growing, deriving value from it. Okay. I mean, that I can see, sense. <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 I want to kind of wrap this up, but I can see a lot of use, sure. even in, from my skeptical eyes, I can see use, of NFTs, especially if like the metaverse takes off, I could see yes. NFTs being huge in the metaverse. Mm-hmm. Um, the ability to yeah. say that you own, you know, these special, you know, metaverse powers or 
metaverse property. Uh, even yeah. coming out of my mouth, it sounds ridiculous. But, <laughs> but um, Well, just imagine if all those things that people buy in these games, like m my sons play Fortnite, and they've probably spent, I'm embarrassed to say how much money they've spent on all these skins and weapons and extra stuff. Imagine if you could take that that you've purchased in that game and then transfer it to another game. But you can't even transfer those Fortnite purchases to another epic game within their own ecosystem. It's a it's a crazy thing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think it's uh, these 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 walled gardens. I think what crypto really is challenging is the idea of a walled garden concept. And of course, we've dealt with this for years with Apple and Windows and. And, you know, walled gardens with with certain software that can only run on one platform. And it's, again, crypto's pushing that conversation to the forefront again on what is true decentralization and true ownership in the digital world. OK, well, I, I, so. I see a lot of uh, people uh, certainly expressing interest in this. And I know there's things that we could do for companies today in the crypto space if they wanted to hire Absolutely. us to you know, be able to take crypto payments or, or something like that on their website, we could, we could knock that out. Um, and we are loving to learn. We have very talented people and we love to learn new things. And uh, so if you have an idea uh, for a business uh, application that involves cryptocurrency or uh, NFTs or the metaverse, or if it's just uh, an old school app idea or a website idea that you want to do, please uh, reach out to us, buildonline.io. And uh, we would love to spend an hour with you just discussing your idea and give you our honest feedback on it. All right, Brian, thank you so much for coming on and talking about this with us today. I, it's been enlightening for me and probably won't be the last conversation we have about this stuff. <laughs> So, oh, uh, I am certain it won't be. And thank you, Ryan, for the opportunity to share. Appreciate awesome, it, man. Bye. <clears throat> All right. See you guys.